Hey, let's talk about games. Hello my friends and welcome back. We're here talking about Gladius again and we're going to be going through the UI within this video. Not doing feedback on it for a change, but talking about what's actually held within it. Going through the information and basically highlighting it to you players because me personally, I missed a lot of this stuff to begin with and it actually really made my learning curve a lot harder. So I just want to make sure that information's getting transferred through, especially to any of the new players, really nice and smoothly. So to start off with, we've built our base already. So we're getting some starting resources coming in. If we hover over one of them, you get a lovely breakdown of what's actually happening with each resource. To go through them very briefly, food is for infantry, ore is for buildings and vehicles, power is for upkeep of buildings, research is for research, and influence is to do with heroes and special abilities for your faction. If we hover over one of these resources, you'll see a lovely breakdown of X amount from buildings. You'll see I'm currently getting six. That's coming from the current home base. It's my only building. We're getting 0.4 from features. Now, this is coming from some of the outposts that we have captured. You'll see each of these are getting extra Brucey bonuses. We're getting an extra one food from here, an extra one power. We're also getting a little bonus from this building. Now, because we've built adjacent to it, we're getting an extra 10% or for the entire city that is connected to this. So that's a very, very powerful building, very, very powerful building opportunity. And it really allows you to place this starting foundation city depending on which faction you're with next to the outpost of the resource of your choice and that will allow you to really sort of catapult your economy so moving back up here we can also see the extra bonus from features obviously this ore is coming from down here and you will also see a little bonus from loyalty if we click on the main feature building here you will see you have a starting loyalty of five this will go down as you build more bases as you build more units if you go over population etc this will either increase or decrease your total output and it's not a priority stat to begin with but if it goes down and if you start spamming bases you will notice a difference certain buildings such as a barracks or or some of the hero generating buildings will help you regenerate a small amount of this but it is something to keep an eye on around the mid game as well as these stats when you hover over the resources you'll also notice on the occasion it'll go down if say your home base is under attack so it's really worth keeping an eye up here every now and again to see what exactly is influencing what you've got to make sure and plan in advance just remember the power will naturally go down as you're building more buildings so it's quite natural to end up with a little bit of an energy drain after you've built about six or seven buildings so this brings us very neatly to the combat stats of units. If we go to the bottom left down here after selecting a unit, we can see we have four armor, which is reducing damage by about 8% per point of armor. Not too bad for a guardsman. Hit points are obviously hit points. That's simply how much damage you can take. Morale is currently at maximum, but as it goes down, so will our accuracy. And you will end up with a cost of about 50% if your morale goes below 33% when you are broken. And that is quite a big problem if you're missing most of your shots we also have actions which is how many things you can do per turn we have movement which is how many tiles you can move bearing in mind that this is based around terrain as well and you can only move one tile around an enemy unit very very worth keeping in mind because if i move to here this unit would not be able to move away now so if i move to here this unit would only be able to move to here very very worth keeping in mind if you want to prevent an enemy from retreating so we hover back over the guardsman now finally go over to level you will notice that your damage your hit points and your morale all go up as you level up by killing stuff and hopefully not dying all over the place and next up if we select the main base there's some other stats i think are really really worth mentioning if you hover over the weapons themselves you will actually see the attributes associated with them so we have a crack missile launcher here two of them in particular doing six damage each one attack times two because there's two of them armor penetration four that's how much armor it simply ignores accuracy 50 percent so there's a little bit of rng and a range of three so you can definitely see this is going to be in range here but you'll also notice a second gun which is a las gun and this has a range of only two so if we fire it at something close it will get to join in if we fire further away only the missile launcher will be firing and the las guns themselves will also do some extra damage although they don't have any armor penetration it's really worth looking at these stats reason being is you get a feel for which of your units have penetration which ones don't which ones have high damage but low number of attacks because that's also going to be relevant if you've got a massive amount of damage on a weapon and you unload it into a pile of infantry and it only does one shot it's only going to kill one infantry 
really really worth considering and take for example the space marine outposts that's what these guys have a very high damage ability but if they're trying to kill infantry with it or dogs they're going to be there all day and finally if we go back to the imperial guard i'll take your attention down to the bottom left here just underneath the weapons you will be able to access the actual buffs and debuffs depending on the scenario the terrain exactly the unit the type that you've got selected you name it it's all going to be displayed down here now this unit is currently having a quite a simple life it's just inside a forest which has a minimum 50 percent range damage reduction bearing in mind that's only range damage reduction so if an orc comes along with a chopper he's going to chop us up if the dogs bite us it's going to bite our bums either way it's not actually going to help protect us but if we were the other way around and he was in the woods he would be taking a lot less damage because we only have a ranged weapon. It's really worth taking this into consideration because 50% damage reduction is quite a lot. If we go over to the main building here, you can also see that we have headquarters. So basically, if that gets destroyed, you're kind of screwed. And it's a stationary, heavily fortified unit. Not particularly useful. Go over to this unit here. You'll also see we have an outpost bonus. So outposts, you can see 50% healing rate. Little bit less damage reduction than a forest, but extra city damage reduction so that means if we build this into a city too that will also reduce the amount of damage we take on top of the 25 percent so all of these stats are really really worth examining because they will let you know if an enemy's within a ruin or something of the sort taking a lot less damage it'll tell you why also if there are certain special units that have certain abilities to them certain passives etc it really is worth checking this bar out because you may have missed some of them and some of them may really really help you guys in terms of beating the ai Guys, I hope that little tour has been useful for you, especially you guys looking at picking up the game. It's a wonderfully detailed game. I'm really enjoying the PvP. Going to be doing a lot more PvP streams, and if you want a video in particular going through certain mechanics, factions, etc., we'll be doing them very, very soon. Guys, take care, have yourself a great week, and I'll speak to you soon. All the best.